Thanks for clicking into this week's Capital Update podcast. We have a lot of information to go over from the Driver's Responsibility Program and polling that indicates support for the Driver's Responsibility Program to what the governor said about it, uh, to, to trauma care professionals that were visiting here at the Capitol this week. We also go over Medicaid expansion with John Hawkins and some polling that's very interesting that indicates a, a majority of support uh, for Medicaid expansion. So make sure you stick around with us for all six to 10 minutes. It's gonna be very important information and it's gonna help your hospital out and get it out to your local communities. Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome to the Capital Update podcast. We've got a lot of things going on here at the, the Capitol this week, mm-hmm. uh, especially at THA. Carrie Kroll, Vice President for Advocacy Public Policy and Quality uh, here at THA. Tell us a little bit about uh, the, the, the week. And um, we had Trauma Day. We had more than 100 trauma care professionals visiting with legislators and uh, rubbing elbows. And, and really, it's, it's great that uh, these folks that are on the ground at our hospitals can really tell people what it's like uh, you know, with patients and what their needs are and, and how does that create an impact for some of these legislators? Well, you can't replace it. It's phenomenal. People do not want to see me every day at the Capitol. They get that regardless. And so what's valuable is that these individuals from the communities are willing to come and explain what it is they're doing every day. And we had a really good group. They were fired up. Uh, made trauma care um, and EMS sound um, very uh, easy in the way they explained what they do every day and I think that's helpful because sometimes legislators don't really understand um, the kind of low-level impact day-to-day activity and so it was great to have people willing to take the time out of their day um, I'm sure some of them had to take vacation days to do it, but they were here and they were in full force. It's a really important uh, part of, of what we do is getting those people out there and showing uh, the, the important uh, effects that a legislator uh, can have just with uh, a little bit of legislation. And speaking of that legislation, there was an opportunity where Governor Perry came out and met yeah. with some of them for a photo op, but he didn't, um, he didn't just come out and take a photo. He actually spoke to them about some key important issues that we've got actually on our agenda as well. Absolutely. He registered the fact that he understood the trauma system. He engaged the participants and wanted to know what level trauma facilities they were at, what roles they were playing in their community. And he really showed support not only for the dedicated funding that we have Um, through the driver responsibility program, but for the program itself, which is, of course, the method that uh, came along in legislation in 2003, which essentially allows uh, habitually bad drivers to pay into a system of fines that help directly fund the trauma care system of the state. Yeah, incredibly important and kind of hammering that home with some polling that uh, Mm THA is announcing this week. Um, that we have actually, uh, we actually commissioned by Base Lease and Associates, the governor's actual pollster, mm-hmm. um, and, and that showed that uh, 87% of uh, general voters are in favor of maintaining the driver's responsibility program. Absolutely, which you can't get much better than that. I mean, it's a clear, clear majority, and and the deal is that we're not talking about you know the mom who's trying to get her child to soccer quickly and runs you know uh, or doesn't run a red light, but who potentially is speeding, but someone who's doing that every day, you know, once a week. These are people who um, are getting uh, convicted for driving um, under the influence or um, driving while intoxicated. And and those are the people that are paying into the system. Um, And And, and so it's important to have that infrastructure. Yeah, the DRP is actually, uh, there's a couple bills that uh, are are proposing to repeal the DRP. Uh, So uh, 65% uh, say that they they want those funds uh, going to trauma care as they're originally intended. That's strong, but you know, even stronger is of uh, of the 504 Republicans that we polled, 90% uh, in total favored maintaining the DRP and uh, and also 76% maintaining those funds for trauma care, which you know, uh, really mirrors what the governor laid out. Absolutely. I think that the opposition in the form of the legislation really is um, the concern that we may be targeting certain individuals and unfairly taxing them. Um, And that's what those pieces of legislation are trying to get away from. I think everybody understands that trauma should be supported. What's quite remarkable, though, is that we have this direct funding stream, and we get that through the Driver Responsibility Program tie. And, you know, it's really, we feel like, taking a step back to undo that. Right, not exactly a time where money is just flying around. So Right, exactly. The 5111 uh, account does actually have uh, a, a large number of, uh, of, of taxpayer dollars mm-hmm. in it currently. Um, and, and the allocation that uh, needs to, to occur, I mean, what are we actually asking for? What's the ask? So the, well, the budget is allocating $59 million per year of the biennium. And we know that each year, uh, 
general estimate is that Texas hospitals give about $200 million in uncompensated care alone. And so that number that the state's allocating for the count doesn't really pay for everything, but it's a start. And so we certainly want to support having those dollars, the $59 million a year, go to funding the trauma care system. We, of course, would love more, and I think our advocates are doing that. We're asking for more. Um, but at the, the end of the day, there are approximately 424 um, million dollars out there waiting uh, dedicated to trauma care that we would like going to the communities to fund the system. And, and more pointed than anything was the governor's uh, direction on that, was allocating that, th those funds. Keep it at trauma, that's what he said, it should go for the purpose it was intended. All right, great, well we appreciate it, thanks for uh, your time and filling Absolutely. us in on, on that area. Thanks for having me. Thanks. All right, we are here with uh, John Hawkins, THA Vice Pres Senior Vice President for Advocacy and Public Policy. Uh, this week is, uh, like any other week during legislative session, busy with a lot of things going on. We have uh, a lot of things, of course, happening with Medicaid expansion. That's kind of the topic du jour right now uh, in healthcare uh, in, in every state. Um, but uh, there's lots going on. What, what is it that we're hearing from legislators right now, and, and what is the conversation? Is it uh, a lot of inquiries and, and expansion on on information related to Medicaid expansion? Yeah, Lance, I think it, it very much is. Certainly, we've seen what's going on nationally. A lot of governors, particularly Republican governors, have, uh, have basically changed course and said, you know, this makes financial sense for, for states to do this. Uh, I think that has created a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in the issue. Uh, I think still, by and large, particularly among conservatives, the issue is trying to do, uh, do a Medicaid expansion that uh, has state flexibility so they can tailor the program to better meet the needs of, of Texans. And so you hear things like the need for personal accountability, a tailored benefit package, uh, and even really more of an exchange type product. And so again, I think what the discussion we see going on in Arkansas right now right. is very helpful because uh, it looks like they're going down the path of of more of an exchange-based model as opposed to an entitlement-based model. And so I think uh, Governor Christie certainly uh, is a kind of a thought leader in the Republican Party. So really, I think a lot of the, the members are just trying to get more uh, information uh, about that. I think Arkansas is an interesting um, uh, model that, that could potentially work in Texas mainly because they're using, so they're essentially using the funds that would come through an expansion to be able to uh, go towards as a, as a supplemental to be able to purchase care on an exchange. Yeah, correct. And, and again, I think, you know, we certainly, when the federal bill is being debated, you know, we argued for more private market coverage as opposed to straight up Medicaid expansion. So I think this is positive. Certainly, you know, we're concerned about Medicaid from the rate standpoint uh, and, and, you know, the supplemental right. payment issues that go along with that. So I think, you know, any, anything that can allow us to, to negotiate something closer to market-based rates, it, I think it's good for consumers, you know, includes personal responsibility. Uh, it's also good for providers, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, we need to be sensitive to the fact that some amount of this population, you know, isn't necessarily going to function well in a market-based system. So I think what we're looking for right now um, from the policy yeah. perspective is getting the right balance there. And so we're starting to see that uh, as we get more and more down the line of what, what Medicaid expansion actually offers to a state, the kind of funds that we would be walking away from, we're starting to see more organizations, county governments, chambers of commerce, see that the, the impact that these funds are going to have on uncompensated care, but also the resonance of that money in the local economy. We're looking at about more than 50 organizations statewide and county governments and, and chambers that are, are supporting. And I, I think that there's a, a building momentum, I suppose. That's positive, and, and certainly I want to thank, you know, all the hospitals that have been working with their chambers, their uh, local government entities, and, and certainly we're, I think, seeing the, the fruits of that labor, almost really an announcement every other day about somebody coming on board. And so I just encourage the, the hospitals to continue, you know, interfacing with their, their community leaders. and and really, you know, telling the story of, 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 of what's at stake here. And I think you've, you've got some, some polling data that can help quantify those messages as well. So 54% of uh, Texans favor Medicaid expansion. That's got a 4% margin of error. But uh, nevertheless, in a, in a state that is so conservative, that's known for its conservatism, um, you know, we're not exactly grading on curves here, but I, I think that that's, that's 
a, a marked uh, accomplishment that Texans understand that Medicaid expansion is important. Yeah, again, I think, you know, again, a lot of the this national discussion is focusing on, on the benefits of this. And really, I, you know, we need to f continue to focus on the message of coverage. You know, we can't sustain a state with 25 percent uninsured, particularly with all the other financial pressures that, that hospitals are dealing with. So we, we need to figure out a way to get, get to get to coverage and not get uh, too caught up in the politics on well, this deal. You mentioned earlier the, the impact that hospitals are having with their chambers of commerce and getting that message out there. One of those messages that we saw in the polling is the effect, uh, the, the positive response that we have on the effect of Medicaid expansion for businesses. Um, there was a high response, and you can see these numbers on our the newsroom on our website, on the THA website, but the, the number of people who responded favorably to the fact that Medicaid expansion increases access to primary care, increases workplace productivity and efficiency, and gets people back to work faster. And I think that that's one of the things that uh, we've really got to relate to people. I agree, and and you know again that goes back to that coverage message. We know health outcomes are better uh, under coverage. That's going to lead to a more productive uh, workforce. So I think that's important. And I think uh, the other thing we saw was continue to talk about the ability to, to walk away from this deal if, you know, the rules of the game change or, you know, the federal fiscal situation changes the match rate. And I think the administration has been clear about that. I think that polled well. That polled really well. The, the fact that we can walk away uh, after the three years of the 100 percent federal funding, it, it, and it's a big impact for people. They understand that uh, Texas needs to be able to have a say in how that money is used. Yeah, and I think, again, we're continuing to try to tell the message uh, about the, the cuts that hospitals are already taking to help finance that coverage expansion. And so there's a lot of misinformation about this adding to the federal debt. Uh, certainly the sequestration has, has shown an additional light on the federal budget situation. But so we got to continue to remind our, our legislators that we are in effect already financing this expansion, so we need to take advantage of it. All right, good point. And uh, what else we have coming up in the legislature uh, this week and, and next? It's uh, really getting down to it. March 8th, the filing deadline, but uh, the important uh, important legislation still still abounds. Yeah, and we certainly keeping an eye on the, the supplemental appropriations bill for uh, the Medicaid shortfall that should be on the Senate floor this week and, and then on to the governor's desk and then working on a, a second supplemental bill to deal with uh, uh, other state needs, one of which is, is the DISH funding for 2013. So we'll continue to message on that as well. All right, good deal. We appreciate your time and uh, let you get back to it. All right, thanks.